Stortford Methodist Church, still on the web, uh, trying out this week not just the technology, but the social distancing and what we need to do to keep everyone safe. You will notice that Frida and I, as we came in, were wearing masks. We do suggest that if you're booking for next week or, or any time uh, during the next few weeks, to comply with government guidelines, it's not compulsory, but to comply with government guidelines, it's best practice if you can, if you're not exempt for medical reasons, to wear a mask in enclosed spaces. Last week, some people commented that the sound volume was not quite uh, as it was for the videoing. Um, so we've tried to rectify that. Thank you for your feedback. Do let us know. We need to know. We can't know unless you say if there are any problems. I'd like to thank everybody for coming here this morning. And some church news now. Sadly, you will know that uh, David, who we've been praying for for many months, died peacefully last Monday. And both his and Frida's dad, Tony's, funerals will take place on the 6th of August. So can I ask that you continue to hold both families in your prayers, please. Well, uh, the, you will notice from the uh, notices, if you receive them by email, that um, the Bible notes are here, and Ruth has a selection. So don't hesitate, please, to contact Ruth, and she will get them to you. If you're comfortable with coming out to worship, uh, then book your seats for next week. We can't give an actual definitive answer to how many seats we have until we see how many household groups we've got, because it, it alters the dynamic. So uh, phone lines are open on Monday and Tuesday, and then from there on in, uh, email, uh, please. And we just want to say well done to Jordan. Uh, she gained her 2-1 degree. Her graduation has been postponed, but the family are very rightly proud of her, and so are, are we. And we pray for her as she starts this new phase of her journey. So let us come to worship. Lord, open the eyes and ears of our understanding today as we prepare our hearts for worship. We want to see you with our spiritual eyes today. Amen. I'm going to ask the congregation here to remain seated uh, and to contemplate the words of be still for the presence of the Lord. You will hear uh, a recording from congregation of, from times past. Those of you worshipping at home can join in and sing. Be still.
So let us pray together. Lord our God, you require truth in the inward parts. We do not wish to deceive, but at times we're not honest with ourselves or honest with others. Take any deception, known or unknown, and pour out your spirit of truth. Today we receive your Holy Spirit and ask that as a cool glass of water, you will refresh and cleanse us today of all sin and duplicity. We give you thanks that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. This is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. I'm going to ask Julie now to come and give us the lesson from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. They are comfortable words at this time. Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or COVID-19 separate us from God? No, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Going to hear now the gospel reading and Stuart is going to read that for us.
hear the gospel of Christ. Glory to Christ our Saviour. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and he buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore and sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Stuart. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and the feelings we all now experience be acceptable to you, O Lord, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. We've been having a series of parables recently. Stuart gave a reflection on the parable of the sower two weeks ago, and last week it was the wheat and the tares. Um, and this week it's a series of short parables. Now when I think of the uh, parable of the mustard seed, I think of this carving. Some of you will know that I um, cycled from Lowestoft to St. David's last October. It seems an eon ago now, uh, but along the route of what's called the Via Beata, Way of Blessings. And this was a, a small seed of an idea for a group of people in Norwich about putting way stations, prayer stations, all the way along the widest part of the country, every 10 miles or so. Uh, Suffolk and Norfolk and Cambridgeshire are populated, a few in Herefordshire now, and a few over in the west uh, of, of Wales. One of the ones that I found difficult to find, not on my cycle route, but previously, was this one. It's in Thetford Forest, if you ever go that way. And it is uh, the parable of the mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. You can go on to the next slide for me. It's probably a little bit clearer. Um, and there are individual little birds in it. Now, Steve 
Edrington, who, who visualized this and got people enthused, is a woodcarver and has a workshop uh, where he actually helps young people who are coming out of addiction to learn a skill in wood carving, most of whom have never ever been in contact with anything biblical before at all. And this, these little birds were each carved individually before being assembled and stuck on to the carving and painted individually by a group of women who were coming out of prostitution in the city of Norwich. And so they were coming out of addiction. They were making a new start. And they paint, they carved, and they painted it, and they achieved something. And he, Steve said to me that the level of achievement was absolutely wonderful to see. It was also, by the way, he found it quite humbling that when they uh, dedicated this way station, they're all, if, if you go to Thetford Forest and find this, they're all in like little sheds, wooden sheds to protect them from the elements. In fact, my friend Betty said to me, so you're going to, on a pilgrimage to garden sheds, Jill? No, it was... It was um, but they took a coach, uh, or a small minibus, with, with these ladies, these girls, women, to Thetford Forest. Now, those of you who know Norfolk will know Thetford Forest is not that far from Norwich. Not one of these girls had ever been to Thetford Forest. Most of them had never been outside Norwich. Their, their world was very, very small. And they were bowled over by the beauty of the forest, but also by the fact that they had achieved something from a very small beginning, a mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed hidden in a field and then flourishing. But of course the birds of the air speak about diversity. All these different birds. Can we just go back a... Uh, you, you, you can see there's all different coloured birds, there's all different types of birds. And that is a parable in itself about God's love being open and welcoming and enabling and the birds of the air being a synonym for the whole world welcomed into God's kingdom. And whereas before the parables would be easily understood by farmers, arable farmers, now we have a, an array of different people that Jesus is using. A woman bakes some bread. A merchant goes in search of a pearl. Somebody, a, a worker, obviously not the owner, not the farmer, not the owner of the field, finds something, finds treasure. And these are the things that are important. And then we have the net. Most of Jesus' disciples were fishermen. So there is the net. They will be familiar with all these things. Hidden, small at first, like the mustard seed, but growing like the leaven, like the yeast, that magical property that raises the whole of the flower. And who would have thought that small things, seemingly insignificant things, could have such an impact. I think what we have learnt from this period of lockdown is to consider what is important. What is the pearl of great price? But also to realise that small actions can make a huge difference. Who would have thought that a 99-year-old walking around his garden 
could have made such an enormous difference to raising money when he first sort of said, oh, I'll, I'll do that. Captain Tom, I'll, I, can, I, can do, I, I can do what I can. Not only did it raise, I, I, I've lost count of the, of the millions that he's raised, but it also provided a much-needed boost to the whole country in hearing about his story, a small, seemingly insignificant thing. But it blossomed like the mustard tree. Your actions, your kindnesses, can have a significant effect on those you meet. What you think is insignificant, just a passing comment, maybe a positive comment, hopefully, to someone, can filter through and make a huge, huge difference. One of the highlights of my ministry, um, and I thought nothing of it at the time, I, I did a, a prayer station with a, with a golden thread and I asked people to consider how the kingdom of God was weaving a golden thread through their lives. And somebody in the congregation whose God's spirit had been prompting a little bit, here, there, and everywhere, and she'd been pushing it aside, took that golden thread home with her, prayed with it, and is now a Methodist minister. Reverend Allison, I'm talking about you. You never, I, I had no idea, absolutely no idea. God planted, had planted the seed and a small insignificant action on my part just happened to get Alison at the right time. So you never know what impact you are going to have. And I think this little period of lockdown has made us reconsider our priorities. What is the pearl of great price? What is the important issues for us? It has made us value friendship. It has made us value family. I believe it has made us value the prayer support of the church worldwide as we have been unable to worship in person up to this point. We, can found, we have found that we can worship in different ways, and that is good. The other thing that comes to mind, if we can move on to, please... is this field. Now, Richard had chosen these uh, intermittent slides and I'd looked at them and then it came to me this morning, I was talking to somebody about uh, preparation for sermons, sometimes things, things come to you, and I realized what it reminded me of. And it's R.S. Thomas's The Bright Field. And I want to read that to you now. I have seen the sun break through to illuminate a small field for a while and gone my way and forgotten it. But that was the pearl of great price the one field that had treasure in it. I realize now that I must give all that I have to possess it. 
Life is not hurrying on to a receding future, nor hankering after an imagined past. It is the turning aside like Moses to the miracle of the lit bush, to a brightness that seemed as transitory as your youth once, but is the eternity that awaits you. He could have written that for now, couldn't he? It's not hankering after an imagined past. The kingdom of heaven is precious. And the pearl of great price is that promise that we have. That Paul writes, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor thing present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the pearl of great price. That is what we need to focus on. And yes, it will feel strange worshipping in masks, not being able to sing in the church building. It will feel strange not being able to have coffee afterwards and a, a chat and a catch up in this building. But the pearl of great price is there for each and every one of us. The love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So may God bless you today and every day. Amen. I'm going to ask Ruth and John to come now and lead us in our prayers for others. And I would ask you to use your notice sheets and throughout the week to pray for those who need our prayers. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the ongoing work in our lives. We know it will continue until you take us home. Thank you for sins forgiven, for a life with you now and a life with you in the hereafter. We pray for all who mourn at this time, especially Avril Woods and her daughters Hannah and Judith, mourning husband and father David and making all the arrangements for his funeral and for Frida as she mourns her father Tony and helps to plan his funeral and also any other people who are mourning that are known to us. We pray for the Methodist Church nationally and worldwide. We pray for the Universal Church and the churches that have met through techni technological means during this time. We pray for all those who have suffered loss in this present coronavirus situation. We thank you for every act of kindness done during this time and all the imaginative ways that ministers and lay workers have used to keep in touch with their congregations. We pray for those who are in need of healing, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Lord, in your mercy, hear these prayers. Amen. Now we will say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is a hymn about the kingdom of God, about the restorative justice that God brings and the way in which we can join with that. So if you're in the building, we remain seated and quiet and concentrate on the words. that it's really hard to sit there and not sing. I think the masks help, but it's difficult. What people watching at home can't see is that the way I cope with that is to use what little signing I have so I'm concentrating on the words. Bless you. It will, I hope, get easier. And we will be using in our services musical reflection. I'm really thankful for Mark coming and playing our intro and exit music. And I'm very, very thankful for all the different gifts that are coming together to make worship in this strange new way possible. So I want to say thank you to our readers, to Julie and to Stuart, for Ruth and John for leading our prayers. I want to say a huge thank you again to our technical team. Norman at the back, Lynn there, um, Mike on camera, and Olive, good to see you, Olive. Uh, Carnier and Richard are in the back monitoring, and Brian is monitoring the light.
live stream feed. There's a lot going into these services. People are using their gifts in many different ways. So thank you. And thank you for watching. Thank you too for all your financial contribution that's enabling us to buy the licenses, the streaming licenses, to continue to function as a church building. <clears throat> Next week, when we uh, invite more people into the church, there will be a retiring collection. Um, but for now, a virtual offertory prayer for all that those gifts in money and in time that are made on the church's behalf. Loving God, bless all the gifts that your people bring by standing order, by putting their collection aside week by week, by giving of time and talents. Help us to enable them to let your kingdom come and grow quietly, secretly perhaps like the mustard seed and the yeast, but bringing in your kingdom of justice and joy and love. Amen. Just before we depart, one more instruction before the blessing. You will have noticed that the door uh, by the organ is open. I'm going to give the blessing. Then I'm going to suggest we turn around and do the, the shalom, the uh, makaton shalom to each other and wave at each other. And that you go out <coughs> a, a row at a time. Yes, so starting from this side, this row's first, and then next row, and then this side of the church. We can't do the normal chatting afterwards. There are coffee shops open in the town. <laughs> if there are people that you haven't seen for a long while that really want to catch up with as you go out and keep your social distance in the open air. There are tables outside in the various places. We can't provide refreshments in church at the present time safely. But thank you for being here. Our worship has ended. Our service to God and our neighbours begins. So, Lord, as we've heard the good news that you accept and love all people, including us, grant that whatever we do this day and in the future, we're responding to this love with a humble and thankful hearts. Amen. And can I invite you to stand and to turn around and to say, Shalom. Shalom. Peace be with you. Go in peace. And if you can, go. Yeah. Mm -hmm.